Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is an XTAR VX4 charger, along with a few batteries sent in from XTAR. What is unique about this charger is that it can charge batteries of different chemistries and, of course, of different nominal voltages. According to the manual, it can charge batteries of lithium ion, lithium iron phosphate, and nickel metal hydride. It can also charge the so called 1.5 volt lithium ion batteries. I have done a video of how these 1.5 lithium ion batteries work a while back. Be sure to check that one out first. Although it didn't mention nickel cadmium in its supported chemistries, you can use this charger to safely charge nickel cadmium batteries if you still have them lying around. Typically, you should have no problem charging a nickel cadmium battery with a charger designed for nickel metal hydride chemistry, but not vice versa. As a charger specifically built for nickel cadmium chemistry, can easily overcharge nickel metal hydride batteries. Anyway, XTAR sent in this charger for me to review, and as usual, I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. Now, I had reviewed a VC8S model charger from XTAR before, and that one is right here. You can see these two are roughly the same kind of design, except this one has eight slots versus we have four slots on this VX4. Well, the VC8S has eight battery slots and also supports mixed chemistry. It does not support charging the 1.5 volt lithium ion batteries, unfortunately. As I had mentioned in my video explaining how the 1.5 lithium ion battery works, the battery essentially consists of a shortened lithium ion cell with a DC DC converter built into the battery cap. During discharging, the terminal voltage is maintained at 1.5 volts and the terminal voltage remains very flat till right before the battery is depleted. These 1.5 volt lithium ion batteries are typically charged at 5 volts. And here is the product box you can see. And on the back, we have the supported chemistries here. Now, I think the marketing department went a little bit gung ho here. What exactly does a visible mixer mean? Anyway, you can mix and match cells in each of the charging slots, and I suppose that's what they were trying to convey. Anyway, the charger comes with a 20 watts PD USB C adapter, and you can see the build quality looks fairly decent, and it's also XTAR branded here. And looking at the specifications, the maximum 3 amp charging current is only possible when charging a single battery. If you're charging two simultaneously, the maximum charging current would be 2 amps. And if you're charging more than two, the maximum charging current would be topped at 1 amp. Before I power it on, I just want to show you the VX4 and the VC8S side by side. You can see that they are essentially utilizing the same mounting mechanism. Of course, one display is up here, one display is down here, and the display on the VX4 is much larger than on the VC8S. But the mechanism for battery mounting and also the look and feel, they are essentially very similar. Let me plug in the USB cable and do a quick demonstration here. I really like this large size display here, by the way. I know you're probably screaming at me that the protection film is still on, and I don't want to take it off just yet because there's some reflection. I think having it on may help reduce the glare here. Anyway, the first thing you notice that when we powered it on, it shows lithium ion. I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me move it closer. It shows you the chemistry is lithium ion. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can switch between lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate chemistry. All you have to do is to press the C, V button. You just press and hold. And now, let's see. Yep, now we change to lithium phosphate. And if you want to change it back, of course, you press and hold again. It changes back to lithium ion. This means that at any given time, you can only charge one type of lithium rechargeable batteries, either lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate. It really isn't a big deal, but just something I wanted to point out. Now let's pop in a few batteries and take a look here. The first battery is this 4000 milliamp hour battery. And this is a standard lithium ion cell. As you can see, it's 18650. So let's put it in. Once you put it in, it will start identifying the battery and it had identified as a lithium ion, you can see here. Now this is somewhat already charged. So right now it's trying to determine the charge rate here. So I believe if I press and hold this button, let's see, no, that's a change in the charging mode. We'll talk a little bit later. And I think I just short press this, yep. So that's kind of a change the charging speed you can see. We're charging at three amps. And if I press it again and again, 
it will change the maximum charging current. As I mentioned earlier, if you're doing 3 amps, you can only charge a single battery at that rate. Of course, right now, the battery is pretty much towards the full charge, and it's not going to maintain that charge rate here. So let's put in another one. Again, it will take a few seconds. You can see that this battery is at a slightly higher discharge state, so the charging current is a little bit higher. So basically the charging current is determined based on the charging state and also the maximum charging current allowable. And let's put in the fuel here. So let's put in this nickel metal hydride battery that's supplied by XR. This one is rated at one amp hour. And not sure if you can see, but once we started charging, you can see there's a blinking light. Just zoom it in a little bit more. And those lights are built in to the battery, indicating they're being charged currently. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually discharge one of the batteries a little bit more and come back and show you the actual charging current here. So give me one second. I will discharge one of the batteries. While I'm discharging those batteries, let me put in two other batteries here. So these are the XTAR batteries also. These are 3600 milliamp hours, slightly less capacity. These are sent to me last time, so let's put those in. And so we'll put this in. And then we'll start charging here shortly. Of course, we're not going to be waiting till the charge is done. I have taken some footages earlier. You can see that once charging is done, it will display full next to the cell that is fully charged. Similar to the XTAR VC8S charger I reviewed before, this charger also supports battery capacity testing. And you can switch from the normal charging mode to the battery capacity testing mode by long pressing on the mode button. So notice that we now have changed to grad versus before it was showing as CHG, which means it was charging. And now let's change it back to discharge again. You can see that it shows as grad. Now, I'm not exactly sure what grad means. Probably it means grading or something similar to that nature. Anyway, I suppose grading is fine as it is testing the battery capacities here. If I were designing this, I probably would have kept it very simple by just displaying discharging. Anyway, that is not that important. Again, in this footage I took a little bit earlier, you can see that once in discharging mode, it will display the capacity measured at the moment in milliamp hours. The discharge current is fixed at roughly 300 milliamps. Keep in mind that when measuring battery capacities for smaller batteries, 300 milliamps could be a relatively high discharge rate, and the measured capacity may be lower than the specified as a result. Typically, battery capacity is rated for a discharge rate between 0.05C and 0.1C. The discharge current, unfortunately, cannot be changed. So the measured capacity really depends on the overall size of your battery here. When discharging is done, each battery would be charged back to its full capacity again. So the full cycle does take quite some time, especially if you have larger capacity batteries. Oh, one thing to point out is that you can see during charging, we are showing the battery terminal voltages on the lithium ion batteries, but not on the lithium ion 1.5 volt cells. And that's because these batteries have the DC-DC converter, so the cell is maintained at 1.5 volt terminal voltage. And during charging, the voltage is actually quite above that. So actually, let's take a look at the charging voltage here. So let's see here. These are... You can see that right now we're at about 4.8 volts. As I mentioned before, during charging, the battery voltage typically is charged at between 4 and 5 volts. And indeed, these are the 1.5 volt lithium ion batteries. In discharge mode, once the discharging is done, the battery capacity will be shown. And you can see here the battery capacity of the supplied batteries pretty much all meet the specifications. The 18650 cells XR Semi are rated for 4 amp hours, and the two cells are both above that rating in our testing here. The two AAA 1.5 lithium ion batteries are rated for 1 amp hour, and you can see that we came just a little bit under. Keep in mind that the discharge rate is fixed at 300 milliamps, as I mentioned before, 
So the discharge rate is actually quite high compared to the battery capacity. And at lower discharge rate, I would expect the measured capacity to be somewhat higher. So I think in this aspect, all these batteries meet the specifications. And I checked a few more batteries XR sent me last time. Again, all the batteries meet their specified capacity ratings. The leftmost one here is the lithium ion cell of the 1.5 volt battery with the DC-DC converter removed. If you recall, the last time we looked at the capacity, the measure capacity didn't quite meet the 2500 milliamp hour that was specified. But I think the reason is because the cell has some defects. As you can see here, now the capacity is only at 1100 milliamp hours. The adjacent one is a AA 1.5 volt lithium ion battery utilizing the exact same cell, but you can see it's measuring above the rated 2.5 amp hour capacity here. The orange one is a nickel metal hydride 1.2 volt AA cell, and it came 164 milliamp hour above its rated capacity. And the last one is a 3600 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, and the capacity is pretty much spot on. All right, now I have discharged these batteries, so let's take a look at the charging current again. So current setting is maximum three amps, so let's take a look. And it will take a few seconds to identify the battery. And you can see we are charging pretty close to three amps. Now let's put in another battery here. So I would expect the charging current to drop to two amps. As you can see, as soon as we put a second battery here, the charging current dropped to two amps. So if I put in another battery here, we should see it drop further to one amp. And indeed, you can see that we are sitting at one amp now. If I put a fourth battery in, let's see the charging current. And right now, all the batteries are essentially charged at one amp. Anyway, that's exactly what the manual said. These four amp hour batteries XR Semi are claimed to be able to sustain a 10 amp discharge rate. So let's actually take a look at that. For the testing, I just quickly hooked up a MiniWare electronic load. You can see here I'm using the XTAR charger as a battery holder, as I don't have a battery holder at the moment. And I put a piece of copper here so I can actually measure the current through this battery here. So let me turn on the electronic load. Right now we're setting, let's see, to 10 amps. Let's just go straight to 10 amps. Let's start. And you can see we're drawing 10 amps no problem, as it mentioned that it can sustain this current draw. Of course, we're right now measuring the voltage at the end of these wires, so the voltage obviously is a lot lower than the terminal voltage of the battery here. So let me let it run for a few minutes and we'll see what the situation is like. And just to verify the terminal voltage here, you can see we're measuring 2.99 volts, those are at the electronic load side. So let's see at the battery side here. We're still measuring 3.4 volts. It has been running for a while now. Let's actually take a look at the thermal situation here. Of course, we're expecting that the battery is gonna be heated up and we're measuring roughly at 50 degrees. Of course, the terminals are much hotter because we have this thin wires here, so that's not really a problem. But you can see the battery cell itself is now at 53, 54 degrees. But we have sustained the 10 amps current for at least 10 minutes now, so not a problem. Now, for these AAA batteries XR sent in, it did not specify the maximum discharge rate. So actually, let's take a look. So right now I have hooked it up to the load, and I'm expecting that it at least should be able to get a one amp discharge rate. So let's start with there. And you can see we are drawing one amp at no problem. 
Let's actually let it go for a few minutes. I want you to take a look at the thermal profile of the battery afterwards. So that's one amp. Let's take a look. And the cell is already pretty hot. At least the DC DC converter section you can see. Ignore the background here because we just tested the discharging of the two large lithium cells and that heated up the bay a little bit. But you can see here we're already at 41 degrees. So let me increase the discharge rate a little bit. Actually, let's do 2 amps. So now we're roughly at a discharge rate of 2 amps, you can see here. And let's take a look at the thermal again. Now you can see that the main section is heating up is the DC-DC converter circuitry at the top. And that is quickly reaching 54 degrees and is still rising. And this is probably the highest temperature you would want to go. But let's see if it has any protection circuitry or not. And I'm just going to keep increasing the current draw till something breaks. Either it shuts down or there's some catastrophic failure here. So far, so good. Everything's still holding up. But it is 61 degrees already. So let me increase it to, let's see, 3 amps. Oh, no, it's not able to do 3 amps. So let's go down. 2.3. Are we able? Yep, yeah, we are able to do 2.3. Okay. So let's keep increasing. So it seems, you can see here, now we're oscillating. So it seems that the maximum current is right around 2.3, 2.4 amps. And above which the DC-DC converter is not able to supply a sustained current. So let's drop it down to, yeah, it seems like we're okay here. But you can see the temperature has risen to 73 degrees. That's definitely not very safe anymore. But we are able to sustain this current at 2.2 amps roughly. Another thing I want to briefly mention is that these 1.5 volt batteries, because these have built-in DC-DC converters, the output would be somewhat noisy because of the switching noise. Now, most of the modern electronics, especially the digital ones, will tolerate the switching noise with no problem. But if you are using these batteries in sensitive battery-powered devices, it could cause some issues. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.